Okay, we're going to start with another controversial gun, the Remington 1902 Ryder rifle in 7mm Mauser. Uh, it is a rolling back uh, style rifle. Now, I bought this gun years ago and I uh, shot it and several of my subscribers and people that I do work with with older guns would send me these emails telling me that they you know have this gun they heard that it's not safe to shoot that they changed the chamber dimensions and one author in a book about Remington rolling blocks said that this was the most dangerous gun Remington made and everything and I'm like you know it's it's I don't know and there are several videos out there and there's a big argument that, you know, they changed. The one theory is they changed the 7mm case dimension sometime in the 20s or something from the original from 1893 when Mauser uh, developed this cartridge. I don't believe that. And another thing I told people, you know, just headspace the gun. Headspace it, and, and that should tell you, because what people are describing is case separation, the headspace is too long, and also one person was talking that the back of the case is bent-like, which means you have the wrong block in the gun, okay? So, well, today, and I shot this thing. Now, I use two types of ammo. Okay, I have this old Remington factory ammo. Okay, I'll show you the box. From this box here, this is 1960s, 1970s. This ammunition is as old as I am probably. And that's the label on it, the weight, and what it is. And I don't even believe they make this bullet anymore. This torpedo style soft tip bullet is just about an exact copy of the original round and I fired this in this rifle with absolutely no problem okay and it shot well I also fired my hand loads which have a PPU bullet of the same weight full metal jacket but a spire point boat tail this ammunition shot to the right and a little bit on the low side. Of course, this is not loaded as powerful as the commercial ammo. Okay, I could feel it when I shot it. Alright, this, this is loaded to within the standards, but it's loaded to the max. Alright, so a couple things about this gun. These guns were ordered or built and sent to South America. But I guess what Remington was due is say they wanted 50,000, okay? Remington would make these guns on the contract. They said, okay, your 50,000 rifles are ready. And then the government would come back and go, hey, we're a little short of cash. We'll only take 40,000 of them. That's all the money we got. So Remington would have an excess and then they would just sell these guns to the open market. Back in those days, there, there were no real gun laws in the U.S. or whatever. You just ordered it from them and got them. Now, the reason I believe, and this is in the military configuration, this will take a bayonet and all this other fun stuff, but the reason I believe this is a civilian gun is on this side of the gun, somebody went and nailed a 1903 Indian head penny in there. And I found some old sporting rifles where people did this. This was a common practice. I don't know what the date means. It's like I seen a 22 rifle, training rifle from World War II. They had a 1921 silver dollar or something in there. The guy might have put that in there. That was the year he was born or something. You know, I, I don't know. So this tells me that this gun never went to South America. I doubt they had U.S. Indian head pennies down there. So somebody bought this gun and used it as a sporting weapon. 
even though it's got a bayonet lug and all the other fun stuff on there. And now, the problem I have and issues with this is these sights. If you look at the sight, a little itty bitty notch down in there. You got a nice high front sight there. And I'm not quite sure how to use this sight because the problem I have is it's awful hard when you hold this rifle and get your face down on it. You can't see the rear sight. You have to pick your head up a little. So you're like resting it on your jaw, not your cheek. So you got to get it up in there. And then again, that post, if I put it all the way down into that little notch in this rear sight, I'm shooting kind of low at 50 uh, yards. And I believe it's marked 200 on there. 200 yards, too. So this may, like a buckhorn sights, you may have to kind of hold this up a bit with your head up and then just get that front sight blade to where it sticks up way over. If any of you guys have trouble with this, I'll do a video and draw the sight pictures of what, uh, if you want. So put it down in the comment section. But yeah, putting it down, getting your head up, and putting that sight all the way down there, maybe having it hang up a hair, I'd hit the diamond at 50. So obviously the way you use this sight is a little bit different than, than normal. And you have to, like I said, you have to hold it in a way that's kind of uncomfortable. You know, you're holding your face up, you can't bear down, tighten up. But when I thought that maybe this was the wrong handguard on the top, and it should have some sort of a groove or be lower than that, and it looks kind of oversized too when you look at it. It's like it's made for a different gun. Okay, it, it doesn't match up. Especially when you look at it this way, you can see that it overhangs. But I've seen pictures from a museum, Remington Museum or Museum, that's how this gun came. So maybe Remington just built these with some leftover parts. You know, and that, that's the way it is. This gun is original. I don't think anything's been modified or changed from it. And I have seen photographs in books where the gun looks identical to this. Okay. Has that model. So it's a little strange. Uh, like I said, controversial gun. And also, those torpedo bullets, they were right on center. And, you know, we're accurate. If you watch the other video, uh, I'll tie that in um, here or whatever to begin. And go see where I went and fired it. Uh, these are the correct bullet. And like I said, I don't believe they make that anymore. That's a, probably a core lock bullet in there. If not, you know, I don't know. That's, that's some old ammo. And I had some of that also uh, all those years ago when I bought it. I did have some ammo somebody found in the basement and just gave it to me. They said, we don't know if it'll work or not. And I've shot that actual bullet and that load in that gun, and it shoots very well. Um, but, you know... I don't really wish to get in an argument with anybody, but I, I don't believe that. I believe either the parts on the blocks are mis mixed up, or these guns that did go to South America were stored in a way where they rusted terribly and somebody tried cleaning out the bores and the chambers uh, maybe by touching them with a reamer or something, maybe knock them out. Or even if they've rusted heavily and you put rust remover in there and remove the rust, some of the metal will go with that because that's what rust is. The metal oxidizes. Remove heavy rust, remove the metal. Okay. And like I said, I don't wish to get in an argument, but this example is, I'd say, in excellent plus almost mint condition 
I can tell from the penny it didn't go to South America. Somebody probably hunted with this or bought it. And it doesn't look like it was fired much. And it is in pristine shape. And I have no trouble using commercial ammo. Uh, it's about the only thing I've shot in it, be it Remington, Winchester, or something like that along those lines. I've fired commercial ammo in it, and I've fired my reloads in it. I have not fired old surplus military ammo in it. I wouldn't, because the bore is too nice on this to risk firing any type of corrosive ammo in it. Okay? And I've had no issues with it. Okay, no no case separation, no no bad things have happened. Okay. So that's it gentlemen. Uh, we got out, got some range time. Hit the like button, subscribe, and stay tuned.